Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be jumping back into console mods and taking a look at one of the most fun map and vehicle combinations available to you guys on all systems. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So once you're at the main menu, the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have both of the mods in question subscribed and enabled. Now the mods we're going to be using here are, at least the main mods that we're going to be using here, are the Yurf Dog Buggy as well as the Yurf Dog Track Map. So the vehicle and the map are really the only mods that you would need in order to replicate this scenario. However, I have brought along a few other mods as well, just to kind of make it a little bit more fun and also so I can show you guys what the track looks like when you drive it with some different vehicles as well. And then at the end of the video, I have a sort of a surprise where we bring out a very, very, very large vehicle that is way too big for the map in question. Now, if you see there, I went into custom scenarios and the map wasn't there. Now, you just need to make sure that you go over to your mod browser, go to the Yurf Dog track, make sure it is subscribed, downloaded, and enabled. Now, again, sometimes people get a little bit confused as to which steps they need to do, or they get confused as to where the maps are, the maps will will appear here in custom scenarios, and you have to click on new game to get to that custom scenarios menu. It's a little bit of a weird way to navigate it, but once you get used to it, and once you use it a few times, it'll be a, a lot easier, um, you know, going forward and going through it. Now, the cool thing about this map is that since it's a small map, it actually loads up very, very quickly, and you'll start here with a default vehicle, uh, nothing too crazy, but one of the nice things about it is that you do have a boost mission right off the bat. So you have your garage entrance right there as well as a boost task. So all you have to do is accept that and it gives you a ton of XP, a ton of in-game money just for driving over to basically like the, the other side of the driveway. Not even the other side of the driveway, but like just a couple of feet down the driveway. So pick up your Yurf Dog buggy and I personally prefer the Subaru engine. I just throw it in there because it adds a good bit more power and it makes it a lot more fun to drive. It makes it a lot more fun to jump and jumping is a big, 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 big part of this map. So you want to make sure that you have an engine that can really get you that momentum and really get you that thrust to get off of the jumps in a you know, a fairly suitable way. Now, you can do a chrome wheel if you really, really want to. However, I decided to go with the standard wheels. I think they look a little bit better. And since I usually do a lot of vehicles in red, I decided to do it a little bit differently for this one, and I went with a orange frame for the buggy instead of a red frame. I usually go with the red frame, but I figured I'd switch it up a little bit this time. So, there's obviously not all that much to do in terms of customization, and I also left the standard tires on it because I feel like those fit it the best. I mean, they really were designed for this vehicle, designed for this model, and designed for this mod. So the cool thing about it is that you actually have these two little start gates, so if you wanted to line up in multiplayer and race a friend, it's already built that way there for you, so you can do that. So just revving it up in neutral and then dropping it, just, just absolutely dropping it into gear, flying over the first jump. And as you can see, the track is specifically built to be the right size for this vehicle. However, there are obstacles that are kind of peppered throughout the track, like rocks that sort of um, kind of poke their way into the track surface. And that's definitely something to be aware of and definitely something to watch for. But all of the track can be done in high range if if you don't flip over or as long as you have the right line. And as you can see here, there are a lot of uneven areas and a lot of uneven bumps and jumps that are specifically meant to, you know, make you flip over. So you really do have to be on your toes when it comes to that. But the way the track is set up, it's set up like a circuit so you can continuously run laps if you want to. But I do want to highlight here how this vehicle has been tuned really, really well in terms of where the center of gravity is so that when you do go off a jump, it leans backwards. The only problem with that is if you land in a little bit of a funny way, it will just fall straight back. So you just have to make sure that you land correctly, and that's all down to how you drive it. I'm not saying that that's a bad part of the vehicle at all. I'm just saying that that's all down to how you drive it. So this section is a little bit odd because of the way you have a sort of a climb and then a level off and then a climb again. And then you have that big jump to where if you hit it correctly, you can fly all the way over that little uh, kind of tabletop that I landed on. You can actually uh, go down right into where the ramp swoops down again. 
I didn't do it correctly because I didn't have enough momentum to do it. And this corner, you also have to watch out because the way the corner is angled, with it being angled a certain way and being flat, it really induces a lot of understeer. So definitely would recommend being careful there. You kind of have to back off a little bit more speed than you think you than you might originally think you would have to, but it's definitely to your benefit there uh, to go ahead and start backing off the speed a little bit earlier than you might think you'd have to, unless you get a really, really good slide going and you can just trail the slide around the corner. Some corners, it's really easy with this thing. Some corners, it's not so easy with this thing. So, and then you can see this final stretch, this final straightaway has some even deeper uh, whoops that make it even harder to hit them at high speed without getting into a weird like rollover related scenario. Now, we're back in the garage, and like I said, if you want to go back into the garage, you can, um, or if you want to keep running laps on the map, you could do that as well. However, I wanted to mix things up a little bit and bring out another vehicle. So, I was, I, I originally had another vehicle in mind, but I was thinking, you know what, one of the most fun vehicles to try and throw around this map would be Frog's Custom Crawler, because it's gonna be, like, right out the gate, it's gonna be too big. It's gonna be way too big for the track surface, not, uh, surface. and I thought... Perfect. That'll make it so much fun. And it did until I realized how front heavy it was. And then when I realized how front heavy it was, I realized it wasn't going to like these jumps very much. And keep in mind, I went with the base engine. I went with the base engine, the base setup, base suspension, basically base model everything. However, if the way it nosedived off of the first jump or even the second jump wasn't enough of an indication to how it was going to do on the third jump, Definitely keep watching because it. Uh, if you want to know about a, if you want to know about a vehicle that does front flips, this thing might as well do them when it goes off of jumps because it's just that front heavy. And, and granted, that's where the engine is. That makes sense. There's absolutely no weight in the back of this thing. There just isn't because it's literally a, you know, it's a welded pipe skeleton, and there's an engine in the front and not much else in the back to balance it out. So. It's just kind of the way the weight distribution of a rock crawler like this is going to end up working out. Now, I didn't dare do this in first-person view because I figured there would be so many things that if I did this in first-person view that I would potentially miss. And I didn't want to miss rocks or anything that the tires could get caught on or clipped on. Uh, I definitely think that there are a lot of other vehicles that would probably be better here, but I just kind of wanted to go out on a limb and see how this thing would react to the track. And it actually did really, really well until it came to a lot of the jumps. And that one, I just kind of grabbed it on the front axle and just barely like tiptoed it forwards and somehow didn't flip. Still not quite sure how I tricked the physics into not flipping there, but you know what? I, it counts. We're still on our wheels, so it counts. Now, that corner, you gotta make sure you don't charge into it too hard, especially with this thing, because if you charge into it too hard, you're just gonna fly off of it like a dirt ramp. Like, literally, you're just gonna fly off, go into the trees, and potentially end up very upside down, like I did right here. And I was really hoping that it would sort of complete that front flip, but, you know, it, it wasn't really feeling it. It wasn't really feeling a front flip right there, and, and honestly... I can kind of understand why. Now, at this point in the video, I would love to know in the comment section down below if you guys have tried this map out, and if you have, I would love to know what your experience has been like, how it has been running on your console, what system you're using, because I've noticed some very interesting, uh, very interesting things about certain vehicles and maps where, say for example, PlayStation users will be having a fine time with it, but Xbox users might have issues, or vice versa, where Xbox users will be fine and PlayStation users will have issues and sometimes it goes even deeper than that into specific systems within your sort of uh, family of systems respectively so like maybe a Xbox Series X runs it fine but an original Xbox One doesn't but a Xbox One X is okay so there's a lot of interesting things to dig into here and there about what runs best on what console, and like I said, I would love to know um, anything and everything that you guys have to say about the performance and experience of the given map and vehicle combination on the system of your choice, because not only does it help the mod creators, but it also helps the developers. Everybody benefits from your feedback, especially when you say, well, 
if I drive near this particular part of the map with this particular vehicle, the game crashes and this is the system that I'm on. That's the kind of specific input that really, really helps the mod creators and the developers out in terms of your feedback going a long way to making maps, mods, and vehicles perform better on every single system at this point. Now, before finishing the video, I'm sure you guys saw us go by the uh, monstrosity in the garage and I did not want to finish the video off without driving the monstrosity at least a little bit on this map. Now, granted, I did not build it at all. I drove it with the quote-unquote small tires, which they're not really all that small. Nothing about this thing is small, even in base trim. So I just wanted to see how ridiculously out of place it would be out here. And uh, the answer is very. It is extremely out of place. Out of place to the point to where it won't even drive under the start-finish line. It simply won't fit. But the axles are nearly as wide as the track itself. So if that tells you anything, that should tell you that this is not the world that this truck was ever meant to be in. And really, at the end of the day, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to drive across the rocks because it's not like it's going to fit down the trail anyway. But what was interesting to me was the fact that the one area that it actually did okay on was once we drove over the rocks, since it has such aggressive um, four-wheel steering, it was able to steer itself around this hairpin corner just fine and nearly just stay on the trail just fine because that rear steer is so aggressive that it just, it's like, whoop, it just brings it right around the corner, no problem, problem at all. And then when we went to go over this, well... Yeah, that, that's pretty self-explanatory, and I'm sure that if we had winched ourselves over that, it would have been the same on the other jumps. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys next time.